Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In my previous video in Salesforce Billing, we have seen different ways to invoice and order. Uh, one is using bill now functionality from order and second was invoice scheduler. Today, we are going to do and we are going to see another stuff in Salesforce Billing which is called payment process. So consider invoices are in place, what you are going to do is you are going to send it to customer, right? And customers are going to pay against that invoice. Now there are two ways to record those payments. One way is manual uh, recording of the payment using uh, you manually go to invoice, create a payment record, uh, allocate that payment, right? And the second is payment processing using payment gateway, right? So out of that two, the very first thing that we are going to see today is payment gateway based payment processing. And in the next video, we are going to see manual payment processing. Okay. So here is the agenda. Uh, we are going to see is what is payment processing, prerequisite, what is payment gateway, how it works, how to set up, a use case around it, and review the configuration. So what is payment processing? So functionality within Salesforce platform that handles the collection of payment from customer for the goods or service being sold to the customer is known as payment processing, which includes invoicing, payment collection, a reconciliation of the payment and reporting of the payment as well. Okay. Now prerequisites. So what we will require before uh, using this payment processing is we will require the packages to be installed if any. Right. We'll require to configure a gateway, payment gateway. So we'll have to go to the payment gateway, create our set up our users, set up our account, acquire the keys and login information, feed it into Salesforce billing, right, to be used. Now, on all of this, you might be know, you might be just like uh, thinking about what is payment gateway, right? So, payment gateway is nothing but an it's an interface which collects the information, payment inf information from the consumer. Now, there are two types of payment gateway. One is POS, that is point of sale. So, if you go to DBART, let's say, and you purchase several stuffs, right? You go to the billing counter and you pay using your credit card, your UPI. Uh, you pay in cash or you uh, pay it via debit card. So that is uh, point of sale terminal, right? So that is what called physical payment gateway. Now consider you are going to Amazon, you are purchasing some products, uh, you go to the checkout page and as you go to the checkout page, it asks you to provide the payment using your Amazon Pay, UPI, your credit card, your debit card, right? So that is an online payment gateway. Clear about the information. Now move forward with the example. So there are several payment gateways available. Out of that, I have listed a couple of over here. The first is Authorized.net, Paysy, Brentrian PayPal, and Cybersource for Salesforce payment. So these are the different payment gateways available right now. Out of that, I am showing you Authorized.net today. So today we are going to see payment processing using Authorized.net. Now how it works. So first of all, in let's say you have shown the information, invoice information to customer and provide it them a link that click here and it will open up a page. Our customer will put in the data like the card information, the UP information and hit submit or hit pay. Now, once that payment is being stored in authorized.net, so once the customer has clicked paid, it, the transaction will get created into authorized.net. Then a payment scheduler is, is running in Salesforce billing, which will create a payment run, right? Based on the payment method associated with that particular payment gateway and for the account, which we are expecting the payment, it will check all the second transaction in payment gateway, which is authorized. If it founds it, then it will deduct that amount from the customer's credit card or debit card, whatever information has been provided, comes to Salesforce billing, checks the payment method uh, for particular invoice. It goes to the details. Let's say if it is SEA, then it will put that much amount, right? Deduct the amount from customer and put that amount in your bank account, or it will provide, or it will uh, add that much amount in your credit card, okay? then. 
it will create payment transaction related to that particular invoice it will allocate the payment from that particular payment transaction to your invoice line item and this is how the whole invoicing process will work now how to set up this process right so consider we are using authorize.net will require following thing we will have to install the managed package for that particular gateway we will have to add some remote search setting we will have to configure a custom setting is how to configure a gateway payment gateway as well right and assign a permission set to ourselves like whoever is being processing that payment now let's see the use case so acme is selling some services to customer and they have decided to use payment gateways to manage those record of payment they use authorize.net okay and all the payment transactions will get recorded into authorize.net and sync to the salesforce once approved or settled okay now let's review that so i have an invoice uh, for cloud kids as of now which is having payment batch as 4 it's been already posted right and we owe them 2400 so they owe us 2400 so we are yet to get this uh, amount from them so with cloud kicks we have our payment method created right so whatever payments that we are getting that should be coming in our credit card right okay these are the details and these are the credit card details that I have provided. So whatever amount is de uh, deducted from the customer's account, it goes and uh, adds to this credit card. Okay, so we got the payment against this. Okay, but this is the payment method we created. Now, as we speak about, right, uh, I have told you that you have to do the custom settings as well, right? So uh, I'll go to this custom setting and show you. And over here, you can see payment gateway configured. Click manage, right? And go to authorize.net, that's the record that I created. And over here, you have to provide a class name which has been specified here. Then, whenever a scheduler is scheduled, this class is being used to read the data from authorize.net, the transaction data. Okay, uh, let's go and schedule. A payment scheduler so I'll, I'll make it let's say it as invoice to scheduler payment scheduler we'll select the same payment batch that's been selected over here right then uh, we'll select the gateway which we want to use the type of transaction we want to make it as uh, once payment method credit card based payment as we want to take it right the start date is let's say at the 149 so i'll make it as 152 so at that time the batch will pick all the data and let's i'll make it as 266 as a target date so it will pick all the invoices which are due as on this date or before as or as on or before this date and expect the transaction from uh, authorized document. and i'll just click save so if I go over here, right, and show you the scheduled job. I'll go over here. And I can see that 152 is the next run day, okay, or next run time. Meanwhile, how the data has been captured. So let's say you go to, uh, you, you send an email to customer and provide the link that please pay this much amount over here. I click the link, provide the credit card details, and hit submit. Right. As soon as they submit it, these informations are uh, typically as entered by customer, like the card number, expiration date, amount, currency, card code, and these all are the dummy details. So uh, that uh, authorized token itself provides. Okay. Uh, invoice uh, against which invoice they are paying, description, and these are the company related information, like who is paying. Right. Uh, we'll have to select the payment method as charge the credit card because they are being charged based on credit card. Right? Uh, the authorization is uh, first the customer will be authorized and then the information will be captured. As soon as they submit or pay over there, this will be submitted. And you can see a transaction is being created. And it is right now in captured and pending settlement state. So it will not automatically uh, settle. Uh, Authorized to net runs the batch every 24 hours and pick all the unsettled transactions and it will mark it as settled. As soon as those are settled, you'll get an email like this 
right, which says like uh, net total amount two four zero zero, number of charge transaction two, amount charge eight four zero zero. Out of that, one was a refund, right, which of six thousand, and one was two four zero zero. So I already created one transaction uh, to save the time, which is settled. Okay, so it got settled, and I've got this email. Okay, so once that is being done. Our payment scheduler will run, right, and pick all the details from payment authorization, which are related to this particular invoice, right? Okay, and now let's go to the scheduler. So if I go to scheduler, I can see a payment run related list. In related list, we can see like uh, there is a payment run got created, okay, and it has one successful transaction. If I go to related list, I can see the payment transaction as well, right? And from that, if I go to this invoice run, I can see the status is being marked as paid, right? I can see that there is already a payment transaction get created, a payment got created, right? If I go to here, payment allocation to the invoice line is already being allocated, right? So this way, we can allocate uh, the payment processor or we can do a payment processing using our uh, payment gateway in Salesforce Spilling. I hope you have liked, your, liked the videos and uh, thanks for watching the videos. Please like and share the content and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.